Okay, welcome back to Leading Through Serving. This is our next session on Lagos Bible Software, a free software from the folks over at Bi Lagos Bible Software. And many of you all have walked through these videos with me. This is a new video that walks through the next section here. So we've talked about documents. I'm not going to go over all the documents in that documents tab. I want to get to the guides and the workflows. This is a free training, so I'm not going to do too deep a dive in every section. But here are some guides that you want to make sure you take heed of. So again, we're going to take whatever it is we want and um, open it. For the guides, you can't drag them necessarily until you open the actual guide workflow and you find the guide that you want. We're going to start with the passage guide. Let's go there. And so you take the passage guide. Again, you slide it into this space. And... I have John 14, 6 here, but let's let's go Old Testament. I'm feeling a little Old Testament. And we're going to talk about some bitter water, I think. So let's go to the passage where the bitter water was made sweet. Hopefully you saw what I did there. And look, whenever you type in Exodus 15, they give you kind of the topic of what's in that passage. Um, the Song of Victory is in the first part of that, but I want to look at where the bitter water was made sweet. So uh, we're in that section now. So here's your passage guide. All these sections, some of them are grayed out because they're not part of the free software. So you can always go and edit your guide and take those out. So if you have important words and passages that you know you don't have with the free one, you can go in. I'm not going to take everything out right now, but you go in and take those out. And you, as you can see, they get removed. So you have journals here and you say, OK, I don't get any journals. I want to make my guide clean, take the journals out and it takes that blank one out of there. All the ones that aren't blank, that aren't grayed out are the areas that you have. So let's start here. So I'm going to start by collapsing everything because I don't want to see all these articles at one time. And again, you can go back and um, take some of these grayed ones out, grayed out ones out. And so. I'm going to start from the top. Your content is any notes and notebooks that you have. We're going to talk about that later. But it starts at the top with commentaries. Commentaries are what um, scholars say about this passage. And so you have a couple of commentaries. One of them is called the um, Jameson Fawcett Brown. It's uh, from 1997. It's a pretty good commentary. It's kind of technical. But it gives you some commentary around the passage that you're reading. And usually when I have the passage guide open, um, here's another user tip for you. I want my Bible open alongside it. So I'm going to um, not drag it to the middle, but drag it to the right so that my Bible is right here on the right side of it. And here's another tip for you. If you link your commentary with your Bible, as you scroll down the passage, it's going to take you to each one of the verses that is in the commentary. How great is that? And so start with the commentaries. Um, Jameson Fawcett Brown is good. And then you also have the Faith Life Study Bible. That's going to show you the um, some study notes on this particular passage. And so um, this passage in 1520 is about bitter water being made sweet. And we see it's happening in the wilderness of Shur. Well, where is the wilderness of Shur? The study Bible tells us that it's on the northern Sinai Peninsula. Um, and it's referred elsewhere in the Old Testament. As we see uh, that in Genesis 25, they settled um, from Havala to Shur, which is opposite Egypt. Or in 1 Samuel, we see that Saul defeated the Malachites as far as Shur. So it depend it shows up a couple of different times in the Old Testament and it's also called the wilderness of Etham. And this also is an entry. So you can click that and it'll still take you to a dictionary entry. So many free resources. Again, you cannot exhaust them in one sitting, but that's why you need to slow down and just read the Bible slowly. This plus symbol on your faith life study Bible is going to give you um, some more information about the word sure. Look at that. The Hebrew word for sure means wall. It likely refers to a fortification wall built by the Egyptians beyond the Eastern Delta as a means of defense. So we see that this idea of shore is, is a word that means wall. Again, the word Mara here, 
Well, when they came to Mara, the crazy part, the ironic part about this particular passage is Mara actually means bitter. And these folks are about to get bitter because they're grumbling against Moses about what they should drink. So they're reflecting the name of the place. Names in the Bible are very important, y'all. I hope y'all understand that. And the only way you're going to understand the names in the Bible is to have resources like this. So, again, this is just the first section of your passage guide. Uh, Matthew Henry is an old commentary. I wouldn't suggest it for you. It just reads old. But if you want to open it, that's fine. As is this one. It's in 1560. That's 500 years ago. We're not reading that one. <laughs> so stick with Jameson Fawcett Brown in the Faith Life Study Bible. I would say as a beginner, start with the Faith Life Study Bible. You can also do it by era. So you can say, I want, I just want the new stuff. And that's going to be Faith Life Study Bible, right? Um, Jameson Fawcett Brown is a little bit older. So you can also um, show, filter it by author, denomination. I usually just use priority or era just so I can get some of the newer stuff. Uh, a couple of other things I want to mention in this session as the passage guide is very important. So again, we just click that guides feature, open up the passage guide. It helps you to study any passage that you want. Uh, parallel passages is another uh, piece. If there was a parallel passage in the Bible that talked about this, then you would find that. Let's go to a uh, gospel account and see if we can find a parallel passage that shows in the gospel account. So I can show you that. Uh, Matthew 7. Um, yeah, there we go. So we have parallel passages in Mark and Luke and on judging. There's one in Mark on judging and one in Luke on judging. These are going to help you understand gospel passages that have um, passages that are parallel to them. Let's go back to Exodus 15 because I want to make sure we get back to those bitter waters and uh, look at cross references. So cross references are something that we mentioned earlier. Remember this treasury of scripture knowledge that we opened up that had all these cross references in there and it was laid out kind of funky. Well, this cross reference section in the passage guide actually for me looks a little bit better because it's going to give you like the top one, two, three, four, five cross references and then all the rest of them. And here's the cool part. You can actually either save this as a passage list. We talked about the passage list, right? Or you can open them in your preferred Bible. So now all the passages that are cross references are in the Bible that you prefer, which I have as the ESV here. And so as I'm studying Exodus 15, here are the all the passages that are cross references in the Exodus 15, 20 through 2 through 27. And if you want to go back to your regular Bible, remove the filter once again. A couple other features before I let you go. Hopefully this has been helpful so far and your eyes are lighting up and you're saying, I did not know that this was all free. An atlas is going to show you a map, uh, biblical places. Also, um, they are across the Red Sea. So Red Sea is going to be there. Sure. We just talked about that, right? All of these are going to open up, you guessed it, fact book entries. Remember we talked about the fact book a couple of sessions ago and the fact book is going to tell you a little bit more about the different places that you see in your particular passage. So pay particular attention to this section, including the maps. The maps are going to help you understand places that you might not be familiar with in scripture. Same thing with people, people, places, things. Israelites are the people in this text as is God and Moses. Things water because the water is bitter. So there's an entry for water in the Lexham Bible Dictionary that's going to give you more than enough information that you want to know about water in the Bible. This is just a powerful tool to be able to use the fact book alongside what you're reading. Uh, I don't want to get into sermons because y'all some some of y'all may be preachers, but this isn't a preacher's training. This is for um, beginners. Thematic outlines, different themes that show up. So disease, they're sick in the wilderness, right? And look at this whole passages on sickness in the Bible. So if you want to just do a study on sickness and you say, man, this would be a good study on sickness. How can I get all these passages? Lagos says, I got you. See this little copy? Click that copy button and then you, and it goes right 
into it just opened a new document in my text edit but if you want to copy it to a passage list you use this drop down passage list hit that copy button and look at what happens you get not only do you get the references but you get all the headings from this thematic outline so if you want to do a study on sickness and disease look at this sickness all throughout the bible disease throughout the bible this is a game changer you hear me uh, topics gonna have some topics so this is gonna show like kind of a cloud or a tag tree that shows you um, topics based on the importance of the topic so wilderness and murmuring and wondering are important topics here right uh, I don't do music uh, media resources none of that stuff really is that great as a matter of fact I would probably recommend that you remove everything from topics down so that your passage guide does not um, get too expansive and if you've been expanding stuff like I have and you say man I just want to collapse everything right click anywhere hit collapse all it's going to take you right back to your clean screen here and that is the passage guide goodness gracious from everything from commentaries to parallel passages to cross references to people places things if you want to open up a passage start studying that passage this is a good starting point for you have a bible on one side have your passage guide on the other and dig into the text you will not regret it all right y'all that's it for the passage guide next time around we're not going to do the exegetical guide because that's more so for original languages and that's not for this training we'll talk about the topic guide don't want to miss it we'll see y'all next go round. grace and peace Thank you.